but what's good y'all? So I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a while now, but I wanted to make sure I was set in my perspective and my intentions in sharing it with you guys. Just to jump right in, I've been eating uh, halal or zabiha meat um, strictly since the beginning of this year. But before I start talking about my specific journey, um, I think I need to clarify a few terms just because they have different definitions for different people. So in Arabi, zabiha or zabiha uh, is the Islamic slaughtering of an animal, as in that animal was killed in the name of Allah. The word halal just means permissible, as in we Muslims are allowed to eat it. But again, some people have those two words defined differently. Now, depending on your background in Islam, um, the word halal has different definitions for Muslims living in the West. For example, for some people, halal means zabiha, as in the meat was killed Islamically. Halal and zabiha are used interchangeably, it means the same thing. This is typically the case for Desi people living in the West. And for some people, halal just means it's not pork. Not necessarily zabiha though. This definition is more typical of the Arab Muslims living in the West. Essentially, the reason behind the, the generally Arab perspective on zabiha meat um, stems from the Sunnah or Hadith about eating from Ahl al-Kitab, the people of the book, so the Christians or the Jews. Now, I'm not debating the validity of either approach, I'm just objectively stating the, the different types of approaches that exist. So that's basically the breakdown. Now, <laughs> I'm Arab and I grew up in America. I grew up basically eating any meat that wasn't pork. So I'd go to McDonald's or I'd buy meat from Walmart or the local grocery store. And I remained that way for majority of my life. There wasn't much of a stress on where the meat was coming from. But then, back in 2015 or 2016, um, I went to this burger joint and I ordered a simple burger. From where I was standing when I was waiting for my food, I could see my food being cooked. I could see that my burger was being cooked on the same skillet as the bacon. It wasn't touching, but it was on the same, it was on the same skillet. Um, but I kind of just shrugged it off. Then I got my burger and I just could not eat it. <laughs> the smell and the look of it, I just could not. I li literally started dry heaving. I was going, <laughs> so bad. I don't know why. On a typical day, I would have eaten that burger. And I'm not generally sensitive to food. Like I can eat anything and hold it down. I'm fine. But just in that moment, I could not eat the burger, and I ended up throwing away a $9 burger. <laughs> then the same thing happened at a barbecue restaurant that I went to, and then again um, at work. I had a really busy day at work, and I wasn't able to eat lunch until 3 p.m., so I ordered a burger from the cafeteria in my work, and basically the same thing happened. I saw him cooking my burger beside a bunch of bacon, and then I saw him touch my patty with the same spatula he used to flip the bacon, and I was just like, <laughs> I was so tired, I was exhausted, I was hungry, I was starving, I was frustrated with the day at work and just, bad day, bad day. And the thing is I couldn't even lie to myself, like I, I clearly saw it. I couldn't deny that. I definitely could not eat that because he just touched it with pork. So from those moments, I started becoming a little bit more conscious about the meat that I was eating at restaurants. And like I mentioned before, the idea of halal or zabiha meat, it wasn't as much of a thought in my head because that's just how I grew up. Even though I did grow up with desi people and I was surrounded by it the majority of my life, it just wasn't a prominently discussed topic. And at this point, I had also been thinking of meat from a humanitarian perspective. Ever since I was a kid, I had always thought through the action of slaughtering an animal for the sake of food. I'm not this huge animal lover, but I mean, I love animals. Like, I love dogs, I love cats, I love cows. You know, I don't I don't want to kill an animal. I'm not psychotic. So I had always previously thought through the morality of killing an animal for the sake of eating. Not that I was standing against it, because um, I was obviously gonna eat that meat, because meat is amazing. <laughs> but I was always generally curious um, to understanding the justification in killing an animal. And to add to that, I had seen so many videos online about how animals are mistreated in farms. In Western countries, majority of the farms um, treat their animals inhumanely. A lot of them tase the animal, or they shoot the animal, or they keep them in really small cages and feed them really bad food. And obviously, as a human being with a heart, those things did not sit well with me. And that's when I started doing a lot deeper research on what halal or the bihamid actually means. That's when I learned that beyond um, having the right intention to kill an animal, you know, having the intention to kill it, to eat it, not because you're a psycho and you want to just kill an animal, that there are certain guidelines on how we should take care of the animal before you slaughter them. Like how we're supposed to feed them good food and clean water and, you know, treat them with respect as you would any creature um, of God. And also that we're not allowed to instill fear in the animal before you kill it. Like if you were to slaughter a goat, you couldn't do it in front of 
all the other goats. You had to take that one goat, separate it, and then slaughter it by itself so that the other goats don't see, or that the animal isn't allowed to see the knife before you slaughter it, because that would instill fear. When I found that out, I was just like, ooh, that's nice, that's nice. Nice way of, of seeing it. I knew generally that when it comes to slaughtering an animal in Islam that you have to have certain guidelines, but I just didn't know the specifics of it. And this was the first time of reading about these things and I was just like, yes. And you know when you read something and it just sits well, sits right and it kind of puts your heart at ease? It's kind of how I felt. Learning those facts gave me more reason to start leaning towards halal meat. And that's when I told myself that I would start a journey um, to adding more halal meat in my diet and just being generally more aware um, of where the meat that I'm eating comes from. So I said when I cook at home, which I do often because I always meal prep, um, I would only cook halal meat. So in the house, only halal meat. Then if I were eating outside and I wasn't completely starving, I would just get something light or vegetarian or a seafood option since seafood is halal. It was just like a general guideline. Like I would occasionally still eat McDonald's. Um, <laughs> I stuck to that for a while and then one time, in late 2017, I ordered a burger from Whataburger, which is a southern fast food joint. I picked up my burger to go, and when I got home, I found this huge, massive slab of bacon right on top of my burger. I'm just like, wow, turn off. So I go back, exchange the burger, I come back home, and basically the same thing happened at the other burger joint. I just could not eat the burger. I took a bite, and I just literally just like sat there. I didn't chew it. I just like... <laughs> Something, you know, beyond me was just not settling. And that was a big moment for me. Big moment of realization right there. And then, early this year, 2018, me and my two friends were planning our trip to Japan. Both of them are daisy. One of them is a strictly zabiha eater. While we were planning the logistics of the trip, the zabiha eater in the group asked me and my other friend, the non-zabiha eaters, he said, okay guys, so basically here in America, you guys eat non-zabiha meat because you're eating from Ahl al-Kitab, from the Jews or the Christians, right? We we're like, yup. And he said, okay, now we're going to Japan where the vast majority of the people are not from Ahl al-Kitab. What are you gonna do then? And I was just like, oh, <laughs> I did not think about that. Oh, my mind was just like, I had never even thought of that case because the majority of people in Japan are Shinto or Buddhist. And I was just like, dang, you got me thinking. That one thought sat, sat pretty deep for me. So when we were actually leaving for Japan, as we were waiting to board our flight, I don't know what came over for me to say this, but I just stated that this Japan trip would be basically a trial phase for me. Since one of the guys in the group were strictly Zabiha, we obviously had to go to only Zabiha places in Japan. I kind of wanted to see what it would be like having to go that extra mile in planning my food around Zabiha meat. Because obviously one of my hesitations from making this jump to eating strictly Zabiha was that it was going to be extremely difficult. Difficult at home, let alone traveling in Japan. But for some reason, you guys, it was so easy. <laughs> I don't know why. In a country with an extremely underwhelming amount of Muslims, we didn't have to walk exaggerated distances to find Zabiha restaurants. It was so weird. We literally walked like maybe half a mile, just as much as we would have walked for any normal restaurant. SubhanAllah, it's as if like God just made it easy for us and just planned it out. So when I got back to Texas, I decided to just go strictly Zabiha. Just full-blown and it honestly wasn't that drastic of a change in my day-to-day -day life. It was a lot less drastic than I thought it was gonna be. Like I mentioned, I cook a lot so I eat at home a lot and all that meat is halal. Also, I just generally like eating at home more because it's healthier. I started to just eat before I leave the house um, so that I'm not starving later in the day. And that way I can just eat something light when I'm out and eat you know, a full meal when I get back home. It does help that I'm not much of a foodie. I'm not very adventurous when it comes to food. I don't generally like eating at restaurants. I truly and genuinely love home cooked food. And alhamdulillah, I live in an area that has a lot of halal options. At least like every five miles, you're gonna hit one halal grocery store or halal restaurant. So basically I save a buttload of money because I eat at home most of the time. It does require a lot of self-control and discipline, especially in those moments where you're irrational because you're starving and you literally don't care about anything, you just want to eat. When I'm in those moments where I'm just starving and I haven't eaten all day, those are the moments where I'm the weakest and I'm like, it'd be really easy just to go to any non-halal restaurant and pick up food real quick. But you gotta find the deeper meaning and understand that it's, it's, it's for the better. It's better for the heart, it's better for humanitarian reasons, financially, and above all, 
it's for the sake of Allah, you know what I'm saying? Now I do get some people that tell me I'm being extra or I'm exaggerating the religion because Islam is supposed to be simple. However, I do personally believe in barakah or blessing in the sacrifice for the sake of Allah. That is reasonable sacrifice, of course, but sacrifice nonetheless. I strongly believe that there is a benefit in going that extra mile and telling yourself that you're doing it for the sake of God. Um, especially when it comes to situations where it just feels right. Like for me, that decision to go Zabihad, it just felt right in that moment. My gut and my conscience were aligned and it just felt right in that moment. It just, just happened. Can't really explain that feeling much because it, it's just, it's just a gut feeling that God gives you, you know? I also hear the argument that it's just too hard to eat only halal. And I'm like, but like majority of the Daisy community does it and they're still alive and they're not dying. So like... <laughs> Clearly, it's, it's not that impossible. I hear the argument that if you live in a really desolate area, that it'd be permissible in that situation, which is fine if that's your opinion. But if I were personally in that situation, as I mentioned before, I do believe that there would be blessing in me going out of my way to ensure that I'm eating something that God, you know, told me to eat. Like driving a couple hours out to the nearest halal grocery store, which I know a lot of people that do that, or even <laughs> being dramatic and buying your own animal and slaughtering yourself, which I also know people who do that. Or even just cutting meat out of your diet in general. Like, we don't have to have meat every single day. It's not as necessary. Obviously, that's easier said than done. And who am I to say these things? I just turned Zippy Halleck this year. So like, oh, I also far too often hear the argument that most halal suppliers don't even follow the rules of Islamic halal slaughtering. And I'm like, that doesn't mean you should completely disregard the concept in general. At least there's the intention for me, as the one purchasing the meat, to eat halal meat. Whether or not they're lying to me, there is the intention for me to eat something that's permissible by God. But putting all debates aside, there is one undeniable fact that the Quran states that we are supposed to eat meat that is slaughtered Islamically. Just like, can't deny that. It's, it's the Quran, like, that's our book, so like. <laughs> With all that said, I am not saying that if you eat non zabiha meat, you are gonna get sent straight to hell and that it's a sin and it's completely haram. Obviously, I'm not qualified to make that such statement. This is just me sharing my journey and my thoughts where I think it's good and healthy for one's iman to at least be conscious about where one's meat comes from. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while um, because I think it's it's really imperative that Muslims hear different perspectives because a lot of people, like myself, didn't even think about these things before. It really helped me not just be aware of what I'm eating, but also just be thankful for what I'm eating. It's a similar feeling I get during Ramadan with the hyper-awareness of what I'm putting into my body. Eating Zabiha gets you in a similar state, you know, day to day. Hopefully y'all were able to take away a few thoughts from this video. You know, let some thoughts sit, marinate, bake a little bit. In the end, Allahu Alam, God knows the truth, who am I but a simple Muslim YouTuber. All right, y'all take care now, inshallah. <laughs>